Look, let me let me say good afternoon, and <laughs> let me start off by saying, uh, uh, well, let me acknowledge let me acknowledge Carl first. Carl, thank you for the invite, and I've I've enjoyed coming, getting to know you, appreciate you, respect you highly. So thank you for extending the invitation to me to come to Baytran. So. <laughs> the Mayor Pro Tem, Dave Morton. Uh, look, let me, let me number one, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, just uh, being very gracious, gracious in, in his comments. It is true, we are together four days out of a, out of a week. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget uh, when, we, when I won the second time, and it was time to select someone to be mayor pro tem. Uh, no one at the time knew who I was going to appoint. And uh, I had talked to mayor pro tem, Dave, about being the mayor pro tem, but no one else, no one else knew. So. Uh, I made, I told a few uh, on city council. I said, uh, uh, Dave, is, Dave is, is, my, is my choice. They said, man, he's a Republican. <laughs> 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 and his area didn't vote for you. And, uh, but what I said to them is that uh, I've been in this business long enough that your word means a whole lot. I don't care what party affiliation it is, your word, your values, who you are as a person mean a great, a great deal. And this is someone who shoots straight. And what I said to them is that I have the privilege of being the mayor of 16, with 16 other council members. And it's just important for us to work together as much as possible. It's not a democratic pothole a Republican pothole is just a doggone pothole. And it's important for us to work together in the interest of the city. He has been an incredible, an incredible mayor pro tem, but more importantly, he's been a fantastic friend. Give it up to <laughs> mayor pro tem, Dave Martin. <laughs> Look, I, 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 would, I would call the mayors one person at a time, but that would take up the rest of the speech. So, uh, so to all the mayors who are here and all the members of city council and elected officials, let me just say uh, good, good afternoon. I do want to acknowledge though Bob Mitchell back there. I've just had the privilege of working with him since I uh, became mayor. I know he's going to be retiring next year. Uh, I tried to get him to wait until I left office in 23. I'm still working on him. Uh, but let me thank you, Bob, for your in incredible leadership. When I came in office, I was reminded that the city of Houston's interest does not just stop at the 610 loop, uh, that the city of Houston goes beyond uh, 610, that it goes all the way uh, to the end of those 640 square miles that cover this, the city of Houston. And so people reminded me, Mayor, don't forget the King Woods, don't forget the Clear Lake area, don't forget the Fort Bend, uh, the city of Houston is more than the 610 loop. And I've done my best to, to remember that and done my best to try to make sure that our resources go beyond uh, just uh, that, that 610 loop area. And quite frankly, uh, when we talk about transportation, the same thing applies. And so it's been my privilege and it's been an honor, it's been a blessing uh, to be, to serve as the city's mayor. Uh, for the last six years and two, two more to go. Time moves so very, very quickly, just moves very, very quickly. So look, I'm here to talk about regionalism, especially as it, as it relates to transportation. Uh, let me start off by talking some, about something a little bit different first. Let me talk about the weather. And, uh, and I do support the Ike Dyke and, and we do need to move that forward because quite frankly, that is another, it's not just a regional thing, it has impact on the whole country. So we do need to move forward on that. But talking about the weather, you all might have heard that I was uh, recently appointed chair of the U.S. Climate uh, Mayors and Resilient Cities Network. Why is, why is that important? Uh, because when we talk about the uh, weather and when we talk about climate change and when we talk about resilience, uh, we are talking about all things that do not care about man-made borders. Weather just doesn't care. It doesn't stop. 
uh, in one location. It doesn't reach that boundary line and say, I can't go any further. Uh, it just doesn't stop at man-made borders. The planet's temperature doesn't differentiate by the lines we've drawn on the maps. A water uh, does not stop flowing uh, at the city's edge. That's, so much, that's one of the reasons why we keep talking about the Ike Dyke, for example. It is imperative then that we stop thinking of flooding or freezes or fires as an issue for one community. Because what affects one affects us all. Well, transportation is no different. And I think we have to keep that first and foremost in, in our minds. When it comes to transportation, what we do, for example, in Sugarland, Joe, uh, impacts the rest of us. What we do call on this end, it in fact affects the rest of us. What we do, for example, in the far northeast or northwest corners, um, even in Harris County, all of us are affected. Just like the weather, transportation impacts us all. And so it doesn't care about the lines on the map. They just want, people just want to get where they're going. People cannot tell you if a road is owned by Houston or a text dot. And they don't care if the bus is, is run by Metro or the Harris County Transit. And quite frankly, they shouldn't have to try to figure that out. It should be a concern of all of us. All roads should be safe. Sidewalks shouldn't get uh, mid-locked, and all buses, trains, and bike networks should be able to connect. And just like the climate doesn't recognize borders, our residents shouldn't have to recognize them either. And that makes it crucial for us, for everyone in this room, uh, to remember that our region works best when our region works together. There are no small cities or or big cities, unless you're just talking pure numbers and geography. Because quite frankly, what happens in Kima, or what happens in uh, Sugar Land, or Friendswood, or any of those areas, will invariably impact the city of Houston. And so we have to work together. Houston's goals for our transportation si system are the same as the goals for everyone else's transportation system. Make travel safe for all. Serve, preserve, and connect our neighborhoods. Strengthen the economy. Be resilient and eliminate climate issues like flooding, which has a, such an impact locally and all throughout the region. Move people efficiently with fewer vehicles on the road, including providing sufficient and redundant options for emergency evacuation. Access our green spaces without overwhelming those green spaces. And I think those things sound familiar. Whether you're talking in Houston proper, within the, within the loop or outside, in Harris County or beyond, we want to be able to move people as much as possible seamlessly. We want the roads to be safe. And we recognize that if there is that storm, that weather system, and we have to get people out of harm's way, we want to be able to do that efficiently. And it is important that we do it in a very, um, in, in a way that we are working together. And you don't want to do it in such a way that you create such a gridlock where more people are placed in harm's way and simply are not safe. And that's the short version, quite frankly, the things that I've outlined. Uh, the version of my goals for the North Houston Highway Improvement Project and meeting those goals and what is needed for me to support the project. But truthfully, those are our goals for all of Houston's transportation projects, even as it relates to the I-45 project. I firmly believe that the people in this room, if we sat down together, the ones who I've taken pictures with, and you've taken pictures with me. If we sat down, I honestly believe that we could get this issue resolved. I honestly believe, believe that. Okay. But sometimes we allow other things to get in the way. Or other people just to get in the way. But for those of us who are mayors, 
for those of us who own city council, the only thing that our people are interested in are results. They just want it to get done. They don't like the hassling. They don't want the confusion. They don't want the chaos. They just want it to get done. And I'm a firm believer that like the people in this room, if we came together and sat down, we could work it out. Because our interests, regardless of the, ju the uh, jurisdiction where we preside, our interests are mutually tied to one another. And in order to solve any problems, you gotta recognize that it's not just what I want, because just what I want won't get it done, but it's what we need in order to benefit what I need that will get it done. That's been the most frustrating thing for me on this I-45 project. As the mayor of Houston, it is imperative I recognize the unique form that Houston creates in the region. Houston is the epitome of a regional city. We don't have one central business district where half of the region commutes into every morning and commutes home from every evening. And while one third of downtown Houston commutes road transit, uh, tra transit we have a dozen different central business districts, each one with different travel patterns. To thrive, we must have safe, reliable, multimodal transportation to each of these districts throughout the region. We must all support our transit system and recognize that our transit systems operated even in the midst of the pandemic, serving our critical employees, our frontline workers, not only downtown, but also at the Texas Medical Center in the Energy Corridor and more, including regional services from Bay Area and El Dorado Parks and Ride. To thrive, our highway networks must provide access and connectivity without, without displacing the people they are intended to serve. And that includes finishing key regional connections like State Highway 99 Eastern and Southern segments which is scheduled to be complete in 2022. Between TxDOT's current work on this 180 mile highway and my vision for an Interstate 45 that meets our regional goals, we can provide reliable and redundant evacuation routes from the south and away from rising water when needed. And quite frankly, for our region, we have been fortunate. We were fortunate through from uh, uh, Hurricane Ike, uh, fortunate from uh, Harvey in many ways, and that I still have memories of what took place there, and we're still recovering from it. But the reality is, we all need to be mindful of that at any point in time, with the way things are occurring, that we do need effective and well organized evacuation routes for our area. To thrive, we must recognize the future is not horizontal travel, but vertical as well. We are well served by our three regional airports, with special recognition of Ellerton as both an airport and a licensed federal spaceport. And this is where I have to stop and give special credit uh, to Mayor Pro Tem, to Dave Martin, to Bob Mitchell, and others that have done yeoman's work at what happened in that Ellerton field. Please give it up to these two and others. The city of Houston and Houston airports in partnership with state and federal government agencies have invested more than $30 million in spaceport infrastructure to date. This supports homegrown Houston companies like Axiom Space in building a commercial space station, intuitive machines and landing commercial payloads on the moon, and San Jacinto, Co San Jacinto College to grow the Edge Aerospace Workforce Development Center providing opportunities for Houston area students and others and helping to meet the demand for highly skilled labor in the aerospace industry, clearly helping this entire region to thrive. And most importantly, to thrive, we must be able to walk and bike because children should not need to be in a car to go to school. Everyone could use a few more steps, just a few more. 
and the planet simply cannot take the exhaust from every person in their own car. So how do we thrive? We come together as a region and invest in our regional transportation system. We support each other as a region with continuous walking and bike route routes, coordinated transit systems, and roads that connect neighborhoods without overwhelming them. We support each other as a region, whether it is HGAD in Austin or Washington, D.C. And we recognize that in working together and realizing that we are all a part of this fantastic region, the best for our area is yet to come. We are our greatest assets. Even in this day and time when there's so much confusion, and let me just put it that way, confusion, I am still one who firmly believes that they are just enough good folk who mean well and want to do the right thing where we can still make a positive difference. I believe that. And I believe it can happen right here, talking about our region. That's one reason, Carl, why I wanted to come. Been the mayor for six years, won't be there much longer. But what I do know is that there's tremendous growth and development in this region. And what I do know is transportation is a critical component to that growth and development. And what I do know is that so goes this region, so will go the city of Houston. And if we don't work together, then we then will not maximize the potential for our future. So my hope is that there are still enough good folk who recognize that our interests are invariably connected and bigger than our politics. And I know that's the case because of the last six years, I've had the privilege with working with a guy from this region that represents this region. And in many ways, we come from like this. But when we sit at the table, we're able to make some incredible things happen. So I look forward to working with you uh, to help moving our region forward in terms of our transportation needs. It's not us versus you or anyone else. It's all of us together, working together to make a difference. And I look forward to continuing that relationship. Thank you.